Hey everyone, my name's Harry Atomic and in this video what we're going to be doing is checking out whether or not it's viable to use a keyboard and mouse on a console. Sounds strange, I mean consoles aren't for keyboard and mouse, consoles are for controllers. What are you talking about Harry, are you nuts? Well, not really, for the most part. It turns out that what you can buy is an adapter that piggybacks your controller and uses an actual keyboard and mouse to play video games. Now one of the hottest debates that is constantly raging on for some reason, I don't know why, is whether or not it's best to play on PC or best to play on consoles. I mean personally I really don't mind, I mean if, if Halo came to like the N64 then you know enjoy playing Halo on your Xbox like and Nintendo 64 but one of the real discussions that come out of this is what type of control scheme works best for what type of games. Now, I think that there is a pretty unanimous decision out there that keyboard and mouse is just the be all and end all best choice for playing first person shooter games and some third person shooter games and some point and click adventures. So it would make sense that a product like this would exist. So I decided to pick one up and put it through its paces and see whether or not a keyboard and mouse adapter is something that people should consider grabbing for their consoles. Anyways, let's take a look and see how we get on. Now the adapter that I'll be reviewing is the C91 keyboard and mouse adapter that I bought off Amazon. Now the adapter itself has surprisingly good build quality. It's got like a metal casing on it and it feels like it could take a bump or two. Plus it's also really small so it shouldn't be too hard to integrate into a keyboard and mouse setup. In the box you get the C91 adapter with a USB-C to USB cable and you also get this handy really tiny manual. Inside it gives you really accurate key mappings as well as some setup instructions that I find easy enough to follow. Now while it does work out of the box there's also some software that you can download to set up some custom key maps. Anyways setting up this adapter is pretty straightforward for the Xbox one. First, you connect the adapter to the console and the light on the unit should turn white. Next, connect the keyboard and the light should turn red. Connect the mouse and the light should turn green. And finally, connect your controller. All the USB ports are labeled so it should be pretty straightforward. Now I tested this setup with a few games, mainly first person shooters because keyboard and mouse dominates controllers when it comes to first person shooter accuracy. So I wanted to see if that accuracy could be gained using a setup like this. Now as I said earlier, you could use the software to set up custom key maps for the device. Although I find it easier just to use the built in Xbox accessories app to set up custom key maps for whatever game I was playing. It may take a few extra minutes to set up for each game, however the convenience you'll get in the long run will be more than worth it. So on to the big question, how does this feel? As you can see from the footage that I've got here, there is so much to be gained from a setup like this. Now I used to play PC games so I was used to a keyboard and mouse setup and it instantly felt familiar. Now I will admit the mouse doesn't feel 100% perfect, you do have to go into the game settings and turn up mouse sensitivity to as high as it can go, however after a minute or so of playing I was totally used to the feeling. I'll switch back and forward here to some footage of me playing Doom with the keyboard and mouse so that you can see for yourself exactly how this setup would kind of work. Now I want to mention as well I'm not the best at first person shooters. I'm pretty average whenever it comes to playing shooter games. Now if I can make it through a section like this in Doom at my skill level with a keyboard and mouse then I would say that that's a win. I also tried Plants vs Zombies, the reason being is because Plants vs Zombies has a controllable cursor that you're supposed to control with the keyboard. Now I also wanted to see if a game that uses a cursor would be useful with this setup. It is kind of, I mean it does feel really weird more so than a first person shooter, so I would say that this setup would probably be for FPS games only, anything else I would just stick to a controller. So there you have it, extended keyboard and mouse controls for 
console games. Now, there's a lot of discussions that could pop up around this, and I would love to hear what you guys think. Like, one of the things that I would be worried about is whether or not that this would be considered unfair in online games. Now, personally, while making this video, I only ever played offline. I just wanted to play around and see whether or not that this would be something that I would enjoy. Ultimately, yes, it is. I have already resolved to myself that this is going to be the control scheme that I'm going to use to play Doom Eternal when it comes out because oh, I love Doom so much. But ultimately, because it piggybacks a controller, I doubt that it would be too easy to detect online. So do you think that this is something that is unfair or do you think that it's fair game if it works then just do it. Also, it seems that Microsoft already have keyboard and mouse support on the OS for some games already. So really what you're doing is you're just extending this functionality to other games. Anyways, there's a lot to unpack. So as I say, I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, with something like this existing on the market and working as well as it does, I think that some consideration should really be given as to where this could be used. So I will be making some future videos involving like keyboard and mouse and sort of exploring some of the other things that I think you can do with this device. Also, let me know down in the comments below if this is something that you would consider picking up. Anyways, if you liked videos like this, then consider getting subscribed to the channel. I do three videos every single week, one on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Monday's video is just like this, where we just take a look at something Xbox related that's like a bit weird and out there, and who knows, could be interesting. Never, I hope you find this one interesting. Wednesdays is community day, where I take a comment or a suggestion that you guys left down below, and I'll make a video based on it so for something that you want to see me talk about or any questions that you have just let me know I'll make a Wednesday video on it and Saturdays is where we catch up on all of the Xbox news that happened that week if you like Xbox as much as I do then consider getting joined to the Xbox Game Club Discord it's a brand new Discord that we've started we're having a muck around in there at the moment there's like a few of us all playing games but ultimately what it is is like a book club for games what we do is we pick a brand new game every two weeks and we play it we chat about it we review it we do like fan arts, we do smoke signals, we do pictures, we do all sorts of stuff about the game. It's just like a creative outlet while playing brand new Xbox games. It's great. You should jump in. Like I chat to people all the time on there. We have like loads of fun. I hope to see you on there. At the minute we're playing Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I'm like playing through the start of it at the minute. It's a bit of a longer game. I'm really, really enjoying it. Although I love Castlevania. It's so good. It's kind of like Doom but not Doom, it's like, I just love Doom and Castlevania. <laughs> Anyways, I hope to see you on there and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.